All right, thank you everyone for coming today. Um, yesterday I had a conversation with Jim Pop uh, about his future. Uh, his contract expired at the end of this year, um, and he agreed it was in the best interest of the franchise to uh, relinquish his general manager duties. Um, he will consult with us till the end of the season and be available to Michael and John um, you know, as we move forward. Um, I am very pleased to introduce Pinball Clemens, uh, as, as everyone affectionately calls him Pinball, um, as our new general manager for the franchise. Um, John Murphy will join us as well as vice president of player personnel. Um, and, and Pinball needs no introduction, so I'm going to turn it over to him right now. Mm. Well, I, um, I uh, well, pardon the first expression, uh, but uh, even seeing your brilliant faces, this is not where I want it to be today. Uh, I first want to pay tribute to um, Jim Pop, who is uh, an icon in our league. He has uh, brought us a championship two years ago and uh, has, um, has been uh, one of the best representatives of our, our league in a long time. And so I, uh, I first want to start there. Um, and uh, further to that, I, I want to say that um, uh, we have to put our big boy pants on. There are days like this, and I'll, I'll ask you to excuse me for not smiling as much as normal, but uh, um, there was also an opportunity uh, here um, to uh, try to, um, uh, again, try to reciprocate to our fans um, some of what they've given me. And so when I was asked the first time, I said no. Um, and, um, and then I said no again. Uh, and uh, then I um, decided that this was um, bigger than me. Most everything is bigger than me. But uh, um, it was um, certainly bigger than me. And, and maybe I needed to sort of look a little bit further and see if I could make a contribution, if I could help. The concept here was actually um, creating culture again, that ethos of excellence, if you will. And uh, so creating culture, um, um, I think our, our goal here is to, uh, to build bridges, not fences. And um, so as we go here, we are, we are looking to try to build a culture uh, first. We um, maybe um, have uh, had a little bit of challenge with transition the last many years and sort of understanding um, who we are, where we're going. And we've um, uh, trying to really begin to understand who we are again. And, um, I'm an old guy now having uh, this be, I've been here 30 years, this is my 31st season and, and so um, I, uh, I'm one of the old guys now and so hopefully um, we can let the guys know who we are and uh, begin to build that brand again. Uh, I am the lowest man on the totem pole here. It's my job to serve everybody else. It's my job to serve this organization. And uh, I needed to be ready to do that. And, uh, and so I, I do understand that that is what my job is. I, um, I stopped coaching uh, in 2007 because my oldest daughter was starting high school. It was the last four years all three girls would be home together. and. Um, that oldest daughter is uh, in the back room there, in the back of the room there now, and she's graduated with a degree in journalism. My middle daughter beside her is in her final year of business and law at Ryerson, and, and um, my final semester, actually. And, um, and my little one is actually in her final year of high school. Uh, so it is, uh, I stop when my, my oldest daughter started high school and, and uh, back again now when my uh, youngest daughter is finishing high school. And, and um, I, uh, I can't tell you um, how passionate I am about this team in this league and, and how passionate I am about um, our fans. And uh, it is my goal uh, to do uh, my level best to make sure that we are not just a competitive team on a consistent basis, but we, 
want to return to being a championship team. Now, we've had some championships here. As a matter of fact, I think we have as many as anybody in the last 30 years since I've been here. I think we have six championships. I think Calgary probably has six or maybe seven. Uh, I, I think there are six as well. And so we, we are, we've won as many championships, I believe, as anybody else, but we haven't had the consistency between. And um, I was uh, surprised when I started to look back. Um, we, uh, um, we haven't had very many runs where we've had 500 or better se uh, seasons in a row. Um, I think we had, uh, um, and, and so with that, um, we, we really want to be a consistent team as well. We have so many uh, different outlets that are available to us now with this relationship with MLSC. Um, there's a young man who we drafted many years ago, and um, I'm going to bring him on um, to, uh, he, uh, he's a graduate of Columbia University Ivy League young man, and he didn't come to play with us at the time. His name is Jarrell Coburn, but uh, uh, in doing so, while he didn't uh, play with us, he um, he was uh, uh, he he had a job working on Wall Street, so he he deferred to that rather than uh, being a rookie player here. But he he uh, has become a great friend and um, is great at analytics and da data and the big data. And so we're going to try to take advantage of those things. Uh, we we've got uh, um, um, so many uh, great people to uh, to be able to pull on when we look at what the Raptors and Masai Ujiri has done and the way they've used analytics and, and, and done some forward thinking. Uh, we also look at Cal Dubas and, and, uh, and the way he's looking forward. And, and uh, I'm hoping Jamil would be able to bring a little bit of that aspect to us. And so we, we, um, we, wanna, we wanna grow, we wanna learn, and we wanna um, produce something here. Uh, that has um, a lasting quality. I, uh, I can ramble all day, so I'll, uh, I'm sure you'll have plenty of questions, so I'll, uh, I'll pause here. <clears throat> Uh, you know, we, we understand that this is a building process, right? We uh, are not going to make promises, right? We're going to work hard and, um, and build uh, this back, right? We need to, to build the championship team. That doesn't happen overnight. We have to um, have a foundation in place first. When I look at the, the, uh, the great teams that we've had in the past, right? We, we had guys um, that, that are still in this community today, right? Who, who, who uh, have families who've grown in there. And so it really is growing those steady leaders. Uh, um, uh, John Wooden said, no written word, no spoken plea can teach our youth what they should be, nor all the books on all the shelves. It's who the teachers are themselves. The number one determinant of a child's cl uh, success in the classroom is the teacher that stands in the front of that classroom, the leader. Leadership is uh, important. And so it is having those leaders, those leaders uh, who, who are not, ju not just founded on the team, but many of them who are founded in the community, who are committed to the team and, uh, and, and are willing to go through that struggle through the rough times. And so we, we need those guys who will identify themselves. We'll have to bring some of those guys on board. And this is a building process. It won't happen uh, overnight, and we understand that. But we are committed uh, to uh, the ultimate success of that. I think um, um, in, um, in, in when I was first asked to be a coach, I, I, I don't know if you remember, I was playing one week. And the very next week, I was the head coach of the team. And uh, so di very difficult situation. And, and that success didn't happen overnight. As a matter of fact, we, we had a winning season the rest of the year. But the next year, I had my only losing season as a coach at only 7 and 11. And I said, enough of this. And I went to the front office. And, and uh, we weren't doing so well the next year. So I came back. And actually, we figured it out. And, and uh, a few years later, we did win the, the championship. And so that whole process took about four years that time. And, and uh, we don't know how things go and how processes go, but we will 
uh, tell you that we're going to give you our best, that we do understand a little bit about winning. I think uh, that team, uh, not me, that team, I think very specifically, um, um, had the longest um, not 500 or better streak um, than any uh, uh, Argonaut team in the last 50 years. And, and so, but it took a while to build, right? We, we had uh, five years in a row where we had winning seasons. The other season, the season before, uh, we did make the playoffs. I came at the end, so we had a winning record while I was there. So, uh, yeah, pretty much we can kind of say a modified six winning seasons, uh, 500 or better seasons, and, and, and uh, you don't do that yourself. If you're the smartest guy in the room, it's your own fault. You, you do that by building excellence around you, and that's what we're talking about. And so uh, for me, um, I, I understand that I'm pretty useless by myself. I can't do much, right? Uh, the, the reason that we're going to do this is uh, because of those players who are in the locker room, and, and some of them who are 2-11 and 11 right now uh, are going to be part of that championship, of part of that turnaround, and they, they, they will have endured, and they'll know what one side is like. And we, we're going to bring some other guys that are, are going to be coming to the table who who know what um, those great seasons are like and know what championships are like. And it's, it's that blend of things as we move on. Don't know exactly how it will go, and I can't design that, but, but that's part of the fun. Yeah, you know, I've, I've gotten to know pinball um, over the years, and what really actually impressed me most, you know, he's, he's so charismatic, um, was his football IQ. And he had a deep love for this team. And, and um, when I first uh, met with him, we were 0-6 we were when, when I talked about, um, would you ever consider coming back with the Argos in some capacity? The, the idea um, was not to change over management. I, I, I think at some point, and, and in some ways it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to be here having gone through a coaching change and now a general manager change because I'm a big believer in my history, 25 years uh, as an executive has been consistency um, and building a core. And um, the goal was for Michael to help the team, pinball to help the team. Um, but at two and 12 and, and going into uh, 2020, um, it was unacceptable not to be in the playoffs two years in a row. And uh, as we got closer to um, being eliminated, um, you know, Pinball became an advisor and, and, and saw some things in this franchise that uh, we need to fix. And, you know, to me, um, I could not think of a better person uh, to lead this franchise going forward with the winning pedigree that he has, the ability to motivate, the ability to um, bring unity um, and, and to show the path forward than Pinball Clements. And the one thing he said to me as well during this time um, was he needs a really strong player personnel guy. And I have spent the last year meeting as many people as I could um, who've had success in the CFL and who've been around the CFL long enough. Um, and John Murphy's came, name came up a number of times. Um, he had been consulting with us a bit with Jim over the last uh, six months or so. Um, and, and, you know, Pinball and I had, had talked about that. Uh, you know, John comes from uh, the school of John Huffnagel and Chris Jones and, and was very successful um, with, the, with, with Calgary and with Saskatchewan. And I think this is going to be an incredible one-two punch because I think their strengths will, will actually amplify uh, the franchise going forward. Um, but in terms of the leadership, this is going to be Michael's team. And, you know, I know what I don't know. Um, what I do know is I do know what winning franchises look like. And uh, we were not looking like a winning franchise. And um, with his pedigree, he's got four Grey Cups, three as a player, one as a coach. You know, John has two with Calgary. Um, and we need that leadership. And, and uh, 2020, in a lot of days, in a lot of ways, folks, starts today. Um, and I'm incredibly excited. Um, I got to tell you, this man loves the Argos. And, and, and for me, when I thought about the future of this franchise, it in some ways goes back to it was a no-brainer that I don't think there's anyone 
um, better suited to be the leader for this franchise going forward than Pinball Clemens. Thank you, sir. Uh, your assessment of the uh, lineup as it is right now? Uh, we will uh, not publicly assess our, our lineup. Uh, those th kind of things are not efficient. That is uh, building a fence, not a bridge. And uh, we want to do things the other way around. We want to build bridges, not fences. Uh, we like uh, many of the things that we see and, uh, and some uh, need, uh, well, they need some bridge work, right? And so um, uh, we, we are, we're happy to sort of move along. And, and uh, uh, it really is, though, about building that excellence around you. My greatest strength my, my very greatest strength is I understand how important I'm not. And I mean that sincerely, right? And, and, and so uh, we are going to build strength around us. And, and, uh, and so we're, we're excited about that challenge uh, that is ahead of us. And, uh, um, and uh, yeah, we, we, yeah that, that I can be excited about today. I'll smile more tomorrow. Um, yes. How important, is it, how important is it to have a passion for pride and winning? talk about bridges, there are a lot of frustrated Argo fans out there who I've spoken to, they've called me and asked what we can do. How can we recover the image of the Toronto Argonauts? Because the last two years has been very, very difficult. What can you both do to ensure that the fans will want to come to the stadium? There is there is nothing we can do to ensure that. What's wonderful about the fans is that they give us their allegiance when we don't deserve it. That's part of what being a fan is. Fan comes off the 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 word fanatic, right? And so it, it means that I support you when it defies logic. And you can argue that in in the last little bit, it maybe does defy logic. And what we're tr here to do is try to begin to build that back, to build that trust back. And uh, there's no way we can earn it. It always has to be given, right? But, but we're going to do our best uh, to earn as much of that respect and understand that this is the, their, their hard-earned money that they work for. And, and, and so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I, I didn't need a job. Right. I have a wonderful foundation that I love, and, and I, I, I like make a living talking to people. I talk, and they pay me, right? And so, <laughs> like, I, I, I'm, I'm not in this job because I need a job. I, I got a bunch of jobs, and, and like, I, I don't need, I'm here because I love it. <laughs> and I care about our fan base, right? And, and we want to make it better. And it's not going to happen overnight, right? But, but we, we, we're going to do our best to infuse that very same passion to every player that walks through that door. Uh, two, two questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, age before beauty. Um, <laughs> uh, your assessment of Corey, uh, the coaching staff, and for uh, John Murphy, uh, uh, I, I would say that uh, John is uh, fooling around with his phone. He may be doing just that now. Uh, <laughs> so um, uh, he, he is um, at the end of this press conference uh, um, and, uh, and probably a little bit before it. I, I imagine uh, he has made uh, a couple of calls, as I understand it, uh, and we'll be working towards that. Uh, but but the, the public assessment, again, is, is not something that um, solid ball clubs do, right? We, we, um, we, we don't, we don't um, you know, ever want to, um, uh, to, to fall in that territory. And if we do, if, if I ever answer a question like that for you, would you slap me? All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, Michael, I'm just wondering then, for the next, uh, the next four, five, six games then, are they in audition for the coaching staff? Will you be watching them? This is, uh, for us, uh, an opportunity uh, to get a head start on 2020, right? And, uh, and, and so with that, having that opportunity uh, to get a, a head start on 2020 puts us at a small competitive advantage. We would rather sort of, you know, be kind of going into the playoffs and, and uh, um, you know, uh, but, but it does give us a small competitive advantage. And uh, uh, as, as far as assessing goes, um, 
it, it's it's our duty uh, to look at everything. Have you had an opportunity to address the team? A, a quick quick opportunity to address the team and and uh, just um, prior, to, just prior to the meeting. Yes, yes, sir. Mike, um, how uh, how are you planning to overcome the fact that, in, assuming the general manager's job immediately, yes. you haven't been working in the business of football <laughs> over the last. Number? Um, I, I plan to do that by um, building a team, and um, that's something that I've, I've had a little bit of experience in, building teams, uh, and uh, it's something that I talk about um, uh, all, quite a bit in, in what, what I do present day, um, and um, uh, consistent with that, um, it's not I, right? It's not I thing. If it's, if it's me, this can't be done, right? If it is just me, this cannot be done, right? We're, we're, we're going to build a, a strong, capable team around us, right? That's the only way that we're going uh, to have any success. So um, I, I do have a, a little bit of uh, experience uh, building teams and understanding how to win and what it takes and being able to assess and, and those kind of things. Uh, so I have a little bit of experience there, but I, I, I I don't have nearly enough uh, to do what we need to get done, right? We have to do that as a collaborative, right? So that's a, that is a we thing. Uh, and as it relates to um, the, the, uh, the, f the, f the things that are usually associated with the GM, the no negotiating contracts and all of those things, that, that's, that's going to uh, fall in Murph's hands. Uh, well, the, the, the reality is is that's part of our development. That's part of our longer term development. And uh, uh, and these guys don't even know about him yet. So uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So that that's part of getting the phase five. And okay. and uh, yes, um, um, I'm sorry. Did you say something else? So 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 yes. So um, so this young man um, uh, it grew up in Scarborough, uh, played football at Columbia, uh, and um, is a tremendous young man who. Uh, I uh, uh, is one of my best friends who I interact with, and we we've we've talked about all. He talked well, not we've talked about. He talks about big data and all these kinds of things uh, uh, quite often, and uh, so. Um, I start asking just generally, like, can you like, can you help our team out, right? Is that possible? And uh, so uh, I did uh, give him a quick call um, last night after I talked to uh, Bill, and we had this conversation, and we uh, decided that this was going to be real. Um, I, I had that quick conversation with him last night, and uh, um, he'll uh, he'll be a guy that I love to introduce you to. He's a really neat guy, and you'll have a chance to chat with him, and we'll we'll see how it fits our game, right? When when it, when you look at um, uh, soccer, right? Uh, I'm sorry, football. The other other football. <laughs> yes, uh, you know they 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 scout around the world, and 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 uh, so they you know they're they're different. Uh, ways to apply. Um, there, there's some real sort of natural sort of things around whether you go for two and and uh, you know yeah, all of those kinds of things, right? That that uh, that that we will certainly uh, do. But we we, we want to see where we could stretch it. That that can it can it um, be a, a, an essential part of our personnel and 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 scouting and looking at players. And I know uh, um, Murph is really uh, excited about that as well. So. Okay. Michael, would you would you consider hiring an assistant general manager? Uh, in, in essence, right? Oh, that that that, that that is who that he yeah. So he will he's the player hawk. He will be. Uh, he knows the players in the league. He knows process. He under he's been around uh, successful organizations, organizations who've done it right for a while. When you look at the model organization, when I first came here, it was Edmonton. Uh, today it's Calgary, and uh, and he's been a part of that uh, organization. And and uh, uh, John Huffnagel himself was the one who uh, gave the uh, suggestion. Um, uh, to Bill uh, when he uh, was going, and this was a part for me. I didn't, uh, you know, know about all of those things at the time, and uh, so uh, Bill brought us together, and um, so we're excited. Uh, yes. We, we, we were we were both in Vancouver. What, what was your impression of that of that game? And what, and as a, as someone who played and obviously coached 
the articles, and he spoke quite passionately about the franchise. What, mm -hmm. what did you make of that, of that performance? Uh, did, what, which game? In BC. But, um, in, in BC? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to move on. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if John is the GM, can you please explain to us what you're bringing? Aside from the fact that you, you have a wonderful personality, the fans trust you, uh, what else are you offering in, as far as the GM portfolio is concerned? What is your responsibility? Um, well, um, when you, you say he's the GM, no, I'm, I'm the GM. Right, and and uh, so uh, I will have last call on uh, many of the things that we do, right? But we will do them collaboratively. We need to agree. We need to be in agreement anyway. Uh, Bill will also uh, at times be in on, on those sessions. Uh, for me, part of what my job is to do is to bring the group together. Right uh, to bring the the, the 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 team together, if you will, and that's that's not only our guys on the field; it is our our, our team off the field and how they work together. Our our front office group that we have that work here with us, um, uh, as well. Uh, my job is to work with the the coaches, um, uh, also potentially uh, working with players. We don't get in the coach's way, right? Uh, but it's all it, it is to help to form uh, that group of coaches who are going to lead us to help to form that group of players who are going to lead us to help uh, collaborate in the decisions that are going to be made. And this is fluid, right? So um, it's it's really hard to say, you know, what that looks like today. Uh, a year from now, I probably can give you a better answer. Yep. Yes. Yep. Could you see uh, this whole season unfold before the season started? And when I'm talking about that, what I'm saying is that uh, looking at the player personnel, did you know that uh, it was going to be a trying season for you? You know, again, I, I, I rely on I rely on Jim and, and Corey in terms of the, the makeup of the roster and the football decisions that are made. Um, like I said, you need to know what you know and what you don't know. Um, my, uh, my job is to put the best people in place um, to produce a winning football team or a winning soccer team for that matter. Um, I, I have 26 years of experience. I've worked in, in Major League Soccer, in the NBA, in the NFL. I've been around a lot of really good people. I know what winning franchises look like. I know what winning teams look like. Um, certainly was not expecting a 2-12 and 12 team. Um, you know, one of the challenges that I laid out for, for pinball was we need to create a core of players. We need to create the best front office and the best coaching staff that we can have um, to produce a franchise that can win championships. And I'm entrusting them. Um, I, I, you know, I don't want to take away anything from Jim Pop because his credentials speak for himself. Um, and it was sad uh, that, that this season did not work out um, because that was not the intention to change general managers. Um, but, but when we were eliminated, um, I felt we need to make a change. I did not expect we'd be two and 12. Um, I know going into the season, you know, I read reports, people thought we had a good squad. I know Corey felt very good about the team coming out of training camp. Um, Jim felt good about the roster even into the season. You know, he felt we were close, a couple of calls here and there, a couple of plays here and there. Um, but as the season has dragged on, Clearly, we're not close. And, and as Pinball said, this is not going to be an overnight um, you know, change of fortunes. We have to build a champion, and building is a process. And I'm going to entrust Pinball, and I'm going to entrust John, and the people they bring to the front office um, to build a winner and to build a champion. And that's, that's, that's my role. Um, you know, uh, last year, when Jim w tried to go out and, and, and make a big quarterback signing, I was called as to say, hey, can I make this move at this price tag? And my answer was yes, if it's going to help us win. And I imagine we'll have those conversations with Pinball and with John. Um, but I'm going to entrust them with the leadership of the Argos um, to run this franchise. And uh, like Michael said, um, you don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. You need to surround yourself with really good people. And I think I've done that today with, with Pinball and with John. Quarterback position, will that be the first priority? I think it's a priority. Um, you know, I know uh, Michael and John do too. And, and um, as we get into that, though, I'm going to rely on their expertise. Um, that, that's not my call. 
Um, I really want to, and, and Michael knows this, and John knows this, um, I, I'm bringing them on board for their football IQ. And I think, I think Pinball's strengths and I think John's strengths will actually complement each other really well um, with our franchise. And so um, I'm looking forward to, to how they want to shape the team going forward. I'll, I'll help you answer that yeah. question. Uh, in six Grey Cup championships here, our quarterbacks have been Matt Dunnigan, Doug Flutie, Damon Allen, and the other guy is uh, Ricky Ray, right? So those encompass our six championships, right? So uh, there is a lot to say. Um, uh, you know, we, we have to build a strong team, right? There's no question about that, but um, ultimately we, we can't disguise how the importance of that position, right? Yeah. Yeah, Zach Kolaris could be that guy, right? Um, but you know, right now, um, uh, Zach Kolaris is is not physically playing, right? He could emerge as that guy. Is he feeling better? Yes, um, but um, we, we don't. We really don't. Um, it, it will serve us no um, no good to to speculate. But uh, uh, just an addendum, Dave, to your um, question. Just the understanding here that um, excellence is layered, right? It's it's not doing one thing. When you have great teams, right? You, you, great teams don't have just a good offense, right? They don't just have good coaches. They don't just have a good defense. They don't just have good special teams. They don't just have leaders on the team, right? They have most of those things, if not all of those things, right? And so they that it, it, it's a culture that is created from the inside, and and uh, and that's probably. Um, you know, other, other than understanding how important I'm not, m my strongest suit. Right. So, uh, the last couple of years, how, how much of a, I don't know if it's a challenge, but you know, you're overseeing two franchises, and this one, you've had to fire a head coach and now a general manager. Can, can you just discuss uh, from a personal yeah. perspective the it's, challenges that you're doing? Yeah, it, it, look, it's been um, extremely disappointing. Um, extremely challenging and uh, you know it's never lost on me the faith that Larry Tannenbaum and the MLSE board entrusted me um, to take on this franchise when when they gave it to me um, two years ago um, I felt at that time that hey we have a really strong head coach we have a really strong general manager this team just came off the Grey Cup um, I, in some ways, just wanted to stay out of the way and give them what they needed to continue running the franchise that just won a Grey Cup. Um, the biggest thing they wanted is they wanted to move out of Don Bosco High School, and they didn't want to train at Downsview Park anymore. And so, you know, we created the offices at BMO Field and at Coca-Cola Coliseum. We, we train at Lamport now, which is, is a step up. We still have to have a long-term plan for, for our own practice field, um, which is something we're going to work on. Um, but I, I took this position thinking that that structure in place was going to continue on and win many championships. And so um, at the end of last season, uh, at 4-14, four and 14, obviously, we made the coaching change. Um, and, and, and Jim and I had a, had a good relationship. And um, I, f I felt, you know, Jim has a very strong football IQ. And, and I felt that... Um, we were still in good hands, and um, it just hasn't turned out that way. And it's been extremely frustrating. And as as the leader, as the team president, I had to, you know, say to myself, I always have a plan. Um, but I used to work for a guy named Dave Checkets, who was very successful, and um, he he was someone that would tell me, Bill, have a plan, but if the plan doesn't work, you need a new plan. And uh, the plan wasn't working um, in terms of uh, the, the current general manager. And um, I needed to move on to a new era. So it's been frustrating. It's been disappointing. Um, but anyone who knows me and knows me well, um, you know, yes, I played the sport of soccer, but I'm a sports guy. And, and, and I've had winning franchises everywhere I've been and everywhere I've went. Um, and my challenge is turning this franchise into a consistent winning franchise. 
Um, even when we won the Grey Cup in 2017, we're nine and nine. Um, and, and Michael and I kind of, we really hit on that about winning is you need to create consistent winning. That happens year over year. Um, and I felt we needed to make this change and I felt that Michael was the right man um, to lead this going forward and, and, and unifying coaching and players, front office, MLSE, the community. Um, and I don't think there's anyone better who can do it than Michael. We were introduced um, actually by a city councilor, Mark Grimes, who's the chairman of Exhibition Place. And uh, um, he just made an introduction to me and we had lunch together. And, and we, um, you know, over the years have, have, have texted each other and kind of stayed in, in, in touch. I actually asked um, Pinball to come over and, and um, meet our coaches at TFC. And he had a chance to speak to my coaches over there about winning and about creating a culture. Um, when, when we acquired the Argos, I had asked Pinball to address the staff um, in his role at that time as an ambassador with the franchise. And um, we developed a friendship. And over the last year, I've tried to spend very much behind the scenes, um, and I've traveled to a lot of different cities, um, meeting people um, who, who have been involved in the CFL and have had a lot of success in the CFL. And a number of times people said, why isn't pinball involved with your football operation? And uh, when Michael and I met for the first time, I would say about me really talking to him about joining the front office, um, I asked him why he hasn't been involved in the last 10 years um, since 2009 in a real front office capacity or football operation capacity. Um, he said, no one asked. No one asked. And so. Um, I asked him and he said no, because <laughs> he had a lot of things going on. Um, and over time, I, uh, you know, if anyone knows me, I, I uh, um, sometimes you got to sell a vision. And, and my vision was that I wanted to create a winning franchise. And, and like I say, there's no one who loves this franchise more than Michael Clemens. Um, and I think when he heard what I'm about and, and my own values and, 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 and my own character, um, we, 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 we were able to come to a place where, where he took it. And, uh, um, it, this was, th this was not long ago, guys. And, and I had asked Michael a number of times, are you a hundred percent can, because if you're going to do this, you need to be all in, you need to be a hundred percent. Diane needs to give you he her obviously, blessing. He obviously <laughs> doesn't know me. Right. So, so when we're in, we're in. But, right? uh, he actually, yes. uh, he called me, um, after the BC game and he said, I'm in. And uh, that message to me was loud and clear that he was all in. And uh, um, I, I, I congratulate him, and I'm extremely excited for him uh, to be here. Two more questions, if anybody then will break, or does anybody have anything else? Yeah, so I got a little bit late. Did, did you acknowledge or reveal how long is Michael going to be general manager? Is it a one-year deal? Or two I hope Michael's general manager for the next 20 years. Like I said, I, 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 I believe, <laughs> I, I do. I <laughs> <laughs> but look, I, I, I believe every winning franchise um, has very little turnover. They have consistent, co you look at Calgary right now, that is a consistent front office staff led by John Huffnagel, um, who, who's the general manager and the team president. Um, you look at the best franchises in sports, they have, you look at the San Antonio Spurs, been one of the strongest NBA franchises and they have very little turnover, R.C. Buford, um, pop, um, that's what we need to build here. And so we have no timeline. Um, and I told Michael, I said, I hope you're here um, as long as I'm here and, and we win many, many championships. Um, so there is no timeline. What I do know is if you are gonna have a consistent winning franchise, you need consistency in your front office, you need consistency on your roster, you need consistency in your coaching staff. And that's what I hope we can, we can accomplish. Bill, you've, you've mentioned uh, John Huffnagel a few times now. Can we infer from that that you might have maybe called Mr. Huffnagel just knowing his experience in the NFL, having coached Tom Brady, Eli Manning won Super Bowl, and obviously the, the legacy he's built with the Stan Peters. Have you called him for some advice on this? You know, I called a number of people, um, and I met a number of people, and I don't want to get into private conversations. I will tell you, I think John Huffnagel is best in the business right now. 
I think what he's done and what he's built out in Calgary, I think it's the model franchise in the CFL right now. Um, you know, one thing I've done and is, is I've really tried to study um, the franchises in this league and uh, their front office makeup and, and, and their coaching staff and, and the turnover amongst their rosters. You know, you know one of the things, and, and you know, we, we talked about it a little bit last night, and I'm not going to get much into it, but we only have nine players that have played in this team more than three years. It's not a lot of consistency. Um, you look at Calgary, and I think I think John knew he knew it off the top of his uh, right off his tongue. They have like twenty something players, and so um, I think John Huffnagel is the best in the business, and uh, and I think we can learn a lot from what Calgary has done.